Uh, first question is from one our visit from one of our visitors from Holland, uh, Marius. He says, "Dear Jack, what would you do if you today were 40 years old, living in Europe, and the effective cost of in, uh, investing in a global index fund was one percent a year?" Move to America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is amazing how the cost structure in the U.S. is terribly stacked against the investor. And this is probably the cheapest company, uh, country to buy mutual funds in. I'm not sure that the, old, the overall brokerage system is, is any cheaper, but the mutual fund expense ratios are lower. And uh, I can remember we used that after the index funds started to get a little recognition, which took a long, long time. Uh, people would come in, I remember one group from Germany, and they said they would be fun to start index fund. And uh, not quite the way they said it, that was close. And uh, I, yeah, we got a little bit, what a great idea, blah, blah, blah. And they said, now, for it to work for us, we need to take 1% a year out. Well, I said, you know, there goes the index fund. There's only point in index fund. That you're taking 1% a year out for distributing. And you probably charge another 1% uh, for managing it. And there goes all the magic. So they left, and I, you know, I, I really like to let people down easily, but there's no point in beating around the bush either. Uh, and that is, it all depends on the efficiency with which you provide the index. So for a European investor, first that, that involves, I think, extremely interesting asset allocation problems. But I, I just talked about the central problem, which I think is the cost problem. But the asset allocation problem is a, you know, one I've tried to deal with a little bit intellectually, uh, which is, you know, I, I believe that it's fine to have all your money in the U.S. We've beaten that ground over and over again. Everybody tells me I'm wrong. Uh, you know, I need a little reinforcement. I hope somebody else will tell me I'm wrong this week. <laughs> the more I hear about the more I'm sure I'm right. But, you know, it, it's easily to be, I could easily be wrong. You know, I can't predict the future of the markets. But uh, when you get to a European investor or an Australian investor, and they want some balance between their home country, I think. Uh, but not if you're in Finland, where there's only one, one company that's 80% of the Finnish market, uh, Nokia. And uh, so it, it changes from country to country. But for a European investor, leaving the cost aside, I'd say it probably should. You know, even if you're, God forbid, in France, and the UK is much better uh, in terms of their economy and their prospects for out of this economic mess that we have all over the world. But maybe 25% in your home country, 25% or 50%, I know that's a big difference in other international, uh, non-US, and 25 to 50% in the US. Something like that, I think, is the intelligent thing to do. But you know, there's, I'm glad I'm not facing that option. This nice person in France. <laughs> <laughs>